Hello and welcome to this course with me, Rory from Harpy Production, and today I'm sitting in with Sonic Academy giving you a complete course on Sound Toys 5. Now you've probably been watching the introduction and the overview, the first video, and then I did mention there in this particular video, we're going to be having a look at the more common features that sort of intertwines a lot of the plugins, just to get you familiar with some of the interfaces. So the first one we're going to start off with is Phase Mistress, just purely because this one and the crystallizer tend to share a lot of the same features and functions within them, but obviously different effects. So what you're welcomed with mostly when you open up a Sound Toys plugin is obviously this wooden exterior box. Then you have sort of kind of like LED display type GUIs there, which if you click on, they'll normally go down into a drop down menu. So if I click on that one, it's going to give you another menu there. And they've all got these similar looking type knobs, which when you click, you go up and down. Now you will notice that if you just do it that way, you will typically have to go by ear in terms of the editing that you're doing. Now, if you want to get a numerical value, all you need to do is hold down on command and then click. And then that's gonna really draw you in to a more tight knit, basically parameter setting. But then if you right click on the Mac, it will then switch to a numerical value, which you can then go in and really visually see what's uh, basically numerical value you're actually dialing into. Another typical feature across all these plugins is this sort of dotted metering display as well, which gives it more of a sort of vintage vibe. That combined with the, uh, the wooden box tends to get it looking a bit more like a vintage bit of hardware which a lot of these plugins do replicate, so that is quite a nice touch. Now, another function that you'll probably find most commonly on a lot of these plugins is the tweak function. Now, this is basically where you can sort of go in deeper into the plugin and you can change certain steps within that particular effect processor. So, for example, a lot of them will have an analog star, which is basically replicating the saturation effect of real-life hardware. So, as you can see, we've got clean, fat, squashed, and other bits like that. So that is, as I say, gonna replicate some more hardware features. So then that is a really good way to go in deeper and try and figure out and actually create a lot of your own custom sounds, which is kind of the key really. Another button or so I say a knob, which is gonna be found on a lot of these plugins is obviously the mix function. And that's just basically mixing between dry and wet. Now the knobs, when you click on them and you drag up and down, that's gonna then change the knob rather than doing it sort of a circular motion. So just up and down. So like I mentioned in the tweak function, you're gonna be given a lot more sort of detailed sort of parameters that you can then edit further. So like I mentioned, the analog style or the offset, depending what plugins you've got. So these are gonna vary, but the option to tweak them further is always gonna be carried out throughout the plugins. You've also got LFO types here as well. So you can change it from rhythm, envelope, random, step or ADSR. So that is basically just changing your modulation. So how you want it to work. So if you want to do like a rhythmic effect, obviously you can change it to then map your tempo of your track. You can then get it locked in time with the tempo. Okay. Then you can also do envelope. So that's just going to basically do your ADSR type effect. So you can get it coming in gradually or coming out gradually. So then you can also map that to other effects or other synths if you like. So you can match the ADSR settings from there. So if it if you want it to sort of come in gradually, just like a swell of a pad coming out open, then you can also do that. And then we've also got random, which basically just randomizes the sort of effect that you've got there. And then you've got step, which basically using DAW as a trigger. And then you've got ADSR again, which is quite similar to the envelope setting there as well. And obviously you've got LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. So it's just gonna be running as it is there. Now, if you want something a bit more timed, then you can go on to rhythm and then click on this button here. You can either tap tempo it, or you can click on MIDI, which will then lock into the DAW's global tempo settings. So that is really handy as well. So other than phase mistress, we'll click onto crystallizer. So again, these two tend to share quite a lot of the same ones. So obviously you've got your mix button here. You've got an input and output there as well. So you might be asking why do you have a mix dry and wet there when you've got a control for input and output there. Basically input and output is just your volume, if you like, whereas the mix is actually blending in but keeping everything the same volume 
from the dry signal to the wet signal so you're not going to be bumping up any sort of volume if you like whereas the input and output would, would typically be stacking the signal on top of each other if you like and again you can see that we've got dials that look very similar we've got the led type display which if you click down it will then take you to preset menus and then another added feature on here which is not on the face mistress is these type of toggle buttons here which you can click on and off as well so again a nice sort of toggle switch like the old analog gear is a nice little touch as well and then like i mentioned most of the plugins will have sort of a tweak function so then you can go in further and do some more advanced edits so just keep an eye on those sort of features as we go through this course because a lot of them we will be relaying back to and there is a couple of other plugins that necessarily don't follow that sort of pattern of common features as well so for example this primal tap plugin here which is a great sort of delay type plugin is basically what i'm talking about this is not following the sort of typical suit of the rest of their plugins so we have a freeze function here on that which again isn't on typical plugins so it is specific to that type of plugin but then again we do have that tweak function which we can then go in further and we can sort of dial in and edit it a bit more advancedly and then again we've got this algorithm function here which will then sort of dictate what kind of algorithms we're going to be using which replicate analog hardware so again that's a really handy way to do it and something that looks different but is that the same sort of feature we have a mix from dry to wet here so basically going from all the way down it is dry and then we're feeding in the wet signal like that and then we have sort of an a and b reference there as well alongside a few other additional features there but i will be covering each individual plugin more in depth throughout this course so that's just a quick overview and a quick sort of heads up to let you know about the common features that you're going to be seeing and some probably less common features that you're going to be seeing, particularly the ones that are more specific to different type of plugins. So I've been Rory from Hyper Production. You've been watching Sonic Academy. Stay on this course to learn more about Sam Toys 5. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.